Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Podcast. My name's Stu Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group. There are some crazy things going on around the world right now, and I just don't know of any way to really get your hands on it except by humor. And today I'm talking to Irina Slav, one of the single best inspirations for my humor and energy in the world. You've got to follow her on Irina Slav, uh, dot substack dot com. Welcome, Irina. How are you? Hi, Steve. Thanks for having me. And you are once again being way, way too kind. Oh, you have no idea because I just listen to your Bulgarian translation or I'll talk, you know, I sit there and then I get my Irina fix every Monday morning on the energy realities with Tammy Nemeth and, and David Blackman. And I absolutely love that time with you guys. You guys are rock stars. Me too. You know, I have to do a little inside baseball this Monday. We have to dog on Tammy Nemeth just a little bit. Tammy was, we were, David was hosting the, the beginning of the show. And then Tammy had to go step out to be a, at a speaker at an event. And on StreamYard, me, you, and David, I wish our listeners could have seen the look of me, <laughs> you, and David when Tammy hit end the live stream and left the 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 room it was pretty funny when all three of us were like what just happened (laughs) no you you were great saying guys she ended the live stream (laughs) it was actually fun but the 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 feedback that we're getting from the energy realities is phenomenal and and seeing all of the folks that are in there and then Doomberg was great. And you were out of town, I believe. And, yeah. and he absolutely loves your articles and your writings. And so it was really nice to give, let him know that you were sorry you missed him. I, I was very sorry, yeah, because I've said it before, I, I'll keep saying it. If it wasn't for Doomberg, probably nobody would know about my Substack because it was Doomberg who discovered me in a way and spread the word. And then people started coming in, you know, reading my Substack. Isn't that great? I, I love me a wonderful push and I'm eternally grateful to him for I, that. Uh, I love Doomberg from the standpoint of he has got a sense of humor. Yeah. He is a chicken. And, <laughs> a green and when, chicken. And when David Blackman and I were at, nape a show david had arranged to have doomberg live and there was a line of people to get autographs from a green chicken because everybody wanted to know who that green chicken was and that was (laughs) really really fun but on the energy side of things there's a couple things that are just going nuts and in your article the other day and i know you've slept since you wrote this I have ruled by carrots on arena slav.substack.com and it is absolutely hoot ruled by carrots and and i mean the ruling class gets upset when things don't go their way and and you have in here Lloyd's is absolutely Lloyd's uh, is the insurance the dark fleet. Here's a quote from the the palatable in the report: the dark fleet. I can't do this in my best Bulgarian, Oklahoma, and Texan accent. The dark fleet has gone on steroids, and the deceptive shipping practices they're engaging with are getting more and more complex and sophisticated. Really? Translation, we're losing business and we don't like it. All because those at the top forgot that actions have consequences and the size of the business lost 14%, 14.5% of global tankers. Uh, sanctions hurt the consumers. Yeah, no, sanctions also hurt those who sanction, not the ones sanctioned, if we're looking at GDP growth numbers for the Eurozone and Russia. So I know what to tell you. I was saying this as early as 2022 and I wasn't the only one and your t-shirt that you sent over is phenomenal I yeah. love I love sanctions just don't work as intended they don't <laughs> no. but they keep piling them on you know the EU is now discussing the 14th package of sanctions against Russia because the other three, 13 worked so well and, and I hear I just just 
caught a glimpse of a headline that the US is considering secondary sanctions on Russia. I have no idea what these will be. But, you know, seeing as the direct sanctions have been working so well, I'm sure these will work brilliantly too. You know, I don't know, Russia might reach the GDP growth numbers of China even. That's how you know, well they might work. I don't get this, Irina. I really don't. Because the dark fleet has grown to, nobody really knows how much. But even Bloomberg yesterday put out an article that says, ooh, it's a dark fleet. Like they got a, oh, it was a whole new break thing. I, I and I got tickled at the art, the authoress of the article because she says, "Oh, it's insurance related." Well, that's how they get the tankers. You know, they they go after the insurance companies and the titles in order to uh, stop the. Well, that's that's why the insurance companies weren't very happy about the price cap because they were supposed to be enforcers of this price cap, and that was a lot of additional work. And they knew what would happen, which happened. Because oil, like love, always finds a way. Oil, like love, always finds a way. Irina Slav, you heard it here first. I love that quote. That is a t-shirt waiting to happen. Okay, I'll write this down. I actually like it for a t-shirt. I'm not sure if it's my thought or, or I read it somewhere, to be honest. I claim it. I, because we are here, and I heard it from you first, I'm attributing it to you. I might be quoting someone. I, I don't want to, you know, take credit for someone else's. It just makes sense. What do you mean? Be ethical? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm kind of big on ethics. And well, no, I like that. But when you sit back and go, wait a minute, Putin, you know, kind of, we sanctioned Iran when Trump was in power. They were doing, what, 400,000 barrels per day. Biden sanctions the snot out of Iran, and they get to 4.4 million barrels per day. That's some good sanctioning right there, baby. Whoa. I don't know about you, but I, I can do the math, and that's that's like, yeah. that's not the end for but I don't know. I don't know. I think that actually their, their exports a little bit over 1 million barrels daily, Iranian exports. <laughs> But it's still quite quite a lot, and it's all going to China. So China gets the cheap oil. And 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 the insure and the tankers are all in the dark fleet. And then LNG was really not having a dark fleet. Now no, it's too. Yeah, it has got them now. I am not kidding you. There are dark fleet LNG tankers now. And they are they are out there, and it is now real. The dark fleet is expanded into LNG, and this means fewer LNG tankers for so-called legitimate shipments, which is great. It's it would mean an LNG tanker shortage. On my news channel, energynewsbeat.co, we are now opening up a trading desk, and I'm really trying to get more into this area Good so news. that so that we can source LNG crude jet fuel and uh, because people will come to me and say hey where is this stuff and i'm like well let me take a look so might as well make money on it and this is this is what of i'm course. finding it is absolutely nutty the world has gone nutty well not not the world just europe and the u.s and canada okay i'm not gonna you're not gonna hear any arguments on this one now, the qu other quote that just gets me absolutely hilarious was your article, June 6th, this is different. And you're, you're so great when you were, let's put it, let me find the quote, because this entertaining as the letter was, it's author's challenge to the Secretary General of the UN in vet in inevitably flopped, inevitably flopped. No one can top Antonio Guterres. Not yeah. even Faith Bristol. He goes, the godfather of climate of climate chaos. The godfathers of climate chaos. I love the way that he called that the fossil fuel industry. That is, he's a he's a poet. The man is a poet. He did one, but uh, but a poet. I personally think the UN should be run out of yeah. the United States. I think it needs to be disbanded. It was based on say satanic culture, and I I'm not a big fan of them they really don't like humanity yeah but they say they do well oh well, you know this the godfathers of climate chaos and and the funny part is it's the renewable industry that causes more damage 
than does the fossil fuel. Than the gold fuels. Yeah, but we don't talk about this because oh. it's inappropriate. Yeah, we don't talk about the, the trees that have to be taken down to, to build wind turbines or install solar panels. We don't talk about the whales. Offshore wind has nothing absolutely to do with whale deaths. It's probably climate change that is killing the whales, you know, and all those birds, you know, the companies and that the, and the bat. wind turbines, I understand they actually get licenses for a certain number of birds that they're allowed to, to have killed by the turbines. But what happens if this quota is exceeded and how do you keep tabs on how many birds your turbines kill? I, I'm with David Blackman on this, and that is the... I get so worked up because the offshore wind com companies in the United States have more tags to kill right whales than there are actually right whales. Oh, they and also have licenses to kill whales? Yes. But wait, they but wait, offshore wind does not kill whales. Is then that why they would they get the license? Exactly. I'm confused. They don't kill whales, but in case they do kill whales, they have a license. And, and then the farmers, and then the farmers that that shot a eagle because the eagle was coming in to haul off his sheep, which they can, they can haul off a baby yes. lamb. Yes, and yeah. he went to jail. Now the wind farm folks kill; they get thousands and thousands and thousands of eagles that they get to kill every year. And that is why I love double standards so much, Stu. I don't get it. Now, the election, the left, we covered a little bit of this on Monday. Can you explain to me? I'm trying to understand France. Macron went nuts, threw a little tantrum, shut down the lower part of France's parliament. Now they have to have a re-vote. Re do you, are you f tracking where all this is going on, how that Not pans really, in? But, but I've been reading some opinions, and apparently most people think that this is ballsy on his part, and also dignified in a sense, because he, he saw the result that Marine Le Pen's party had, which right. beat his badly, and he decided to do the right thing. This is what people are saying. I don't follow events from France closely because I don't speak French and I don't care about France all that much, to be honest. <laughs> but, uh, well, sorry. But maybe, maybe he was acting preemptively. Maybe he, I'm speculating wildly. These are just my thoughts. But right. Macron and, and the government that, that has been, you know, voted in by that parliament... Right. Has not been have not been very popular lately. So maybe he wants to have the elections now rather than sooner rather than later. Right. In case Marine Le Pen garners even more support from voters. A little bit because of chess match going on there. Maybe, maybe he has the brains to do that. It's surprising, I know, but maybe he does after trying to wanting to to send French troops to the Ukraine and thinking that the Russians won't respond. But he, he may be banking on the fact that France is very, very much a leftist country. They have very strong leftist representation among the population. And this population might mobilize at the next elections and vote right. for parties other than uh, Le Pen's. Wow. I may be giving him more credit that, than he deserves, but then again, I may not be. Maybe that's what he's doing. Well, you know, you just brought up about six other things and it just, it irritates <laughs> me to death that we have a man that is a puppet, a meat sack in the, in the White House today because of what he has done and what it's very is, embarrassing. it is extremely embarrassing. And now we have a Russian nuclear missile fresh ship in China. They have a submarine sitting out uh, 60 miles off the U.S. shore doing drills in Cuba today. So how does it feel to have nuclear weapons by another country that you dislike so close to your borders? You know, see how we feel, said the Russians. I, I can't blame, uh, you know, I do the lousiest Putin imitation in the world. I absolutely do.
Hey, I sound like Fonzie out of, you know, the happy you days. Do. You instead. should watch him more. I, I do, and he's very soft-spoken. Yeah, I, after after you were making fun of me last time, about a year ago. Uh, but the whole thing is, I don't blame him. You know, uh, Ukraine because is... Because you're a, not a fan of double standards, because you can think. Uh, it, well, thank you, but I, I, I'll pay you later. But, you know, the, the, the whole thing is, the whole thing is just absolutely nuts. Here he but is. But what's more interesting, because you said Biden is a meat sack, indeed, he does not make decisions. It's just the, the, the mouthpiece and not a very coherent one. What's more interesting to me is what are his handlers thinking? I, I'm either... afraid that they're not very well prepared about the realities of modern geopolitics. They're no. not very well informed at all. And, and that's not bad for you. It, it is really bad, Irina. And, and either they're incompetent or they're evil. I'd I like, think they're incompetent. I think they're incompetent. I'd like to hope that they're incompetent because if they're evil, they need to be tried for treason. And I there agree. is a, a, a severe penalty for treason that needs to be used if it is treason. Is it capital punishment? Yep. And I... I've always been a fan of life sentences because then the, the person serving that sentence gets to suffer for longer. Kind of cruel this way. Why give That's them a the good point. Weekend? Yeah. It's a good point. <laughs> but, but then again... But they I, might get... Uh, yeah, please. I mean, they're, they're about as evil as it gets if they are evil. And, and I think they're incompetent. There's a lot. That's, that's a big problem in the West. There's a lot of incompetence right now in, in right. Western Europe and, and in the US. And that's a plague, really, because whatever your geopolitical affiliations or, or, or opinions, right. it's dangerous. In, incompetence is just straight dangerous when we're talking about exchanges between nuclear powers and oh. i feel very strongly about all this because bulgaria is very very close to russia and ukraine i don't think they'll be targeting us but we are too close for comfort so Your fallout the fallout could be very bad yeah well if they decide to strike germany which i doubt unless germany strikes first of course it won't be that, that close, speaking purely geographically, but the very fact that I have to consider such developments makes right. me extremely angry. I right. do not want to have to consider such developments. No. Digging a uh, bomb shelter is something that I, I never thought I'd have to see on my card again. I'm old enough, Irina, that I remember drills. Get under your wooden desk... And pretend that you're not going to get blown up by a nuclear bomb. Yeah, we had mm. the same when I was in school in the 80s, yeah. Well, but yeah, we didn't but... take them seriously. We, we, we knew there wasn't going to be a war. Well, Funny. My dad, yeah, my dad was on a flight line and I, I went and sat and, and this was during the Cold War. And he, my dad was ready to go to war and fly against Russia all these years. And... Russia was not always the bad guy, you know? I mean, the, I know, it, but you had yeah. the better propaganda. That's that's why the West won the Cold War. Because in the East, nobody really believed that uh, the imperialist West, which it turned out to be, actually, if you think about it. Think about the Green New Deal and all that. They're trying to make a new empire. No, so I'm serious. Think about it. It's just not the imperialism we were warned about. Anyway. But nobody believed that because we knew right. that it's not true. On your side of the Iron Curtain, guys, you believed everything your governments were telling you. And that, that's how they won. You know, it, I, I, it, it's, I wish that the world would understand it's not about the people at the top. Because all the people, if you took all the people around the world, we'd all probably get along just fine. I, I mean... Uh, it's like politicians I, didn't have specific agendas, which happened to be business agendas. Right. Isn't it strange? Yeah. I, I got tickled at a meme that happened yesterday or day before. I saw it on, on X, and it was funny that Putin, we actually, Putin, the Clintons made millions off of the uranium they sold to Russia 
And then Russia, we still own it, but now we got to pay Russia to get our own uranium back. Why would Russia buy uranium from the U.S.? I missed that. Because it was graft to the Clintons. And, and so it was a disaster. I mean, this is like, but yet they are still making money and free. But they get this. Now we're, we're just loaded nuclear power plants with fuel cassettes, I think they're called, with, with fuel from Westinghouse. But I'm hearing that it's actually Russian uranium because Russia exports uranium to the U.S., so, but, but our, our brave leaders are telling, we are off the Russian fuel. We're getting American fuel, which is Russian fuel, but exported to the U.S., packaged the <laughs> Exactly. It's I'm sure it's more economical this way. Oh, absolutely. And, um, and then, you know, the Clinton Foundation made a lot of money off of it. So, you know, I, I they're think- They're still free. They're not in jail. Neither one of the Clintons is in jail. Nah, nor will they. Because it's different. Yeah. Well, now that we've solved the world's problems today, Irina, thank you so much for our (laughs) our discussion today. And people can find you on irinaslav.substack.com. And oil price. I love your oil price articles as well, too. Those are are phenomenal. And I get more polite. Do what now? They're more polite. Yes. And I actually can quote those. But the other one (laughs) is uh, the energy realities on Mondays. We have to advertise for that because that is actually going very, very well. The downloads are phenomenal. So thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Bye-bye.